I use Obsidian, a Markdown-based organization system for all of my meeting notes, my daily journal, project documentation, and general knowledge base. It's fantastic. Their notes are stored in Markdown and allows me to do my daily journaling right in the terminal. Obsidian is great as a knowledge base, but you know what's essential as a knowledge base? That's right, a natural language query tool. When you have a few hundred pages of notes and journals, could you imagine having to manually search through each one of them to find the information you need? Instead, we build a markdown parser that combines with GPT so you can find all the cool restaurants we ate at, what time we woke up on a certain day, where we last take the dog out for a walk, etc. using just one sentence. It's basically just chatting with your diary. This video is a little bit more intermediate level as we'll build a custom pipeline to parse our journals and then use the storage mechanism from Lama Index to save us some money by having to repeatedly call OpenAI's API. So the LM embedding token is almost going to be zero tokens or near zero once the index is constructed and it's safe. And I also want easy access to query my journal, so we'll use the ArcPros module to build it out into a simple CLI that I can query anytime, anywhere from my terminal. So if I want to find out when is my last visit to the gym or the last time I take my dog out to the park, I can ask my journal and it will tell me. So all of this code will be on GitHub, like the rest of this LLM playlist, so feel free to hop over to my GitHub repository, start it, fork it, and then build your own version of a live, a queryable, a chattable journal. All right, let's dive in. So let's start by opening up your IDE and then just create a new file. You can name it anything you want. I'm going to name it journal.py because this is where I'm going to query my journal. Now to run all of these examples, I will need OpenAI API keys. So I have them in my env file, all right? So in my env file, I have some sort of OpenAI API key strings. I have my SK and a bunch of things. This will look very different from yours but it's okay. You save them in a new env file and you just load it in. And the way I like to load them in, there's so many ways to do this, but I like to bring in load.f and say load, and then just call this method. Now, if you're using Obsidian, it's a markdown based system, meaning all of the nodes, all of the journals are actually just markdown files. They are just md files. But what it means here is that you don't actually have to use Obsidian even. As long as your nodes are in the markdown format, you're good to go. You can follow along this video, all right? But I wanna show you one thing that Llama Index does. It actually includes something called the Obsidian Reader that you, that you can bring in and you specify a path. So you can say this is my notes path. This could be any path. It could be on your Dropbox, it could be on desktop. So you want to change the notes path to where you store your notes. If you don't have those notes, you can just create some notes and just put them in markdown format and you're good to go, all right? I'm going to say Om Samuel Warps Fragments Journals. Don't ask me why it is like that. It's just the way I store my notes. Okay, you can store them anywhere. And journals is a directory where all my bullet journals goes into. And now you can use the Obsidian Reader that is right up here to read them. So you can say docs equals to Obsidian Reader. Notes path. And you do a load data. Here, depending on how your notes look like, you may want to experiment a little bit. So I'm going to bring in maybe two or three of them and I'll show you the examples, okay? So Obsidian Reader. I have GPT keyword table index. I have GPT vector store index. So if you want to experiment with a keyword table, you can. You just have to say index equals to GPT keyword table index. And you build this index from documents. So you say from documents and you pass in your docs. Now I want to just take a look at how the structure of this index looks like. So I could say index, index proc. So if you want to compare the keyword table index to vector store index, they are very identical, so you have the from documents docs. Same thing, you could say index dot index block. Now let's go into our terminal and let's run that. I'm going to say dash i journal dot py. The reason I'm doing dash i is to put myself into interactive mode so I can compare the structures of the index. Right, it says it did not find an open AI API key. And that's because we bring this way too low. Let's bring it all the way up. Let's try that again. This time should work. So it needs to load the env file, right? It needs to go into your env file, it scans all of them, bring them in, and then it constructs your index. And it's done, all right? So let's bring up the terminal a bit and let's take a look. If you look at the keyword table index, you see the index ID. Now this index ID is something you can change as well if you want to give it a new index. So I could go ahead and say something like index and I would change the index structure and assign a new index ID and I could call it journals. So when you save this to your local What's more recognizable, you said, oh, I want to query that uh, index, but that index uh, name is called journals, right? So you want to give it a name like that. Okay, so if you look at the keyword table, keyword table is going to do something quite different from the vector store. It's going to find all the keywords in your diaries. And again, these are all just markdown files. So you don't really need Obsidian. You, if you store your files in a markdown format, uh, you could actually try to 
experiment with this and you can maybe leave it in the comment section let me know if it works out for you or not if we pay attention to the keyword table we see that these are the keywords that you extract from your notes so i see keywords like the milestones like learning dbt i, I dabble with dbt quite a bit it's in there python deep learning python social developer profile so all of these are the keywords and that's using the keyword table index so if you want to have your index uh, constructed using all of these keywords you may want to stick with this if not, you could use the vector store index. You could try to experiment. Everyone have a very different note taking system. So what works best for me may not work best for you, right? I'm gonna comment this out. Just, just keep it there, right? Just keep it there. And you should try to experiment. There's a few ways you can tweak some of this stuff and see which one works best on your organization system. Now with this index, right? It holds a lot of information. It holds the, your vectors, it holds your documents, but the most important ones are the doc store and the vector store. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of them, right? So let's say index.docstore, this is your document store, and I can put a get document, and you just have to pass in a document. Let's say we pass in this one, because I just find it here, I'm just gonna copy that. Uh, you see that this is a keyword, uh, the text is lesson, multiple hours squared, stepwise backward delineation. So this note here contains some important information about that day, so maybe I was teaching a lesson. I was teaching a lesson, I was giving a lecture about multiple hours squared and talking about stepwise and backward delineation. So this gives you some information about the text, give you a document hash, it tells you where it starts, where it ends. So that makes it very easy to query, right? Because it tells you exactly where the location is. So DocStore is very useful. But another one that is quite useful is the vector store. So vector store, and you can just look at the data. But this is gonna be very, very messy um, unless you really have a reason you wanna inspect them and really optimize them. For them, there's probably no reason you would go and uh, you know, manually look at the a vector store like that. Now you might think, okay, is this it? Is that really that simple? It looks like with just 15, 10 lines of code, I guess, less than 10 lines of code, you could start to query it already. Let's maybe try a lot. Let's say query engine. And of course, uh, if this works out, then we we'll cut the video to very, very short time. Um, but let's see, I'm gonna take the index, I'm gonna say take that and set it up as a query engine. Then I'm gonna write my first query. I'm gonna say query engine. And I want to ask my diary a few questions. So I'm going to first ask the question. I'm going to save this to response because I want to bring that out to Spring later. And I'm going to ask my question. So I could ask a question like, what time do I wake up most days? Do I wake up most days? That information is contained in my journal. So if I were to say, what time do I wake up most days? I'll expect the index to contain that information and then I'll return that back to me. So let me run that. Then I could print response. And what does it say? It says, it's not possible to answer this question with the given context information. All right, could this just be a fluke? Could this just be a one-off? Let's try another query. And let's say, what did I do on the 1st of April? Now that should be in my markdown. I have it somewhere. But let's see if it figured that out. I'm gonna say response. And then I'm gonna print my response. Nothing as April 1st is in the future. And this kind of brings me to the core of this lesson is that a lot of times when you try to improve your LLM, it's not really about bringing state-of-the-art LLM, it's trying to you know, find more expensive models. It's not really about that. It's not even about paying for state-of-the-art machines, models, and, yeah, and, and getting better performance. A lot of times it's about tidying up your data and then making sure that your index is robust, is organized, and retain as much information as you can, right? And we're not actually doing that. And why are we not actually doing that? So if we look at the docs in here, Right, there's the notes path and there's the docs. If I print out my docs, these are all the information. It does have a few, but it also misses out a lot. Why does it miss out so many? Because a lot of the times when you write notes, you also use all kind of uh, formatting. So maybe you have some tables, you have some markdown tables, you have some images, all of those things. And if you use something like out of the box here, it's very unlikely that it would just work. So what we need to do is to really optimize this whole process. And the key lesson, the key takeaway here is that when you try to do LLM and you try to improve performance, many times it's not really just looking at a model and then getting better models. It's not really about that. It's really about the data, the engineering side of things. Getting your data in a better shape so that you can index more effectively before applying the LLM. And so what this is what we're going to be doing right now. So I'm going to go back up to my notes and I will remove this. So this is if everything works out for you right now and you try a few query and it works, that's great. You can just keep them. But if it doesn't, I'm going to create one that is markdown based. So I'm gonna create one without using the Obsidian uh, Reader. So let's comment out Obsidian Reader, let's not use that, and let's use let's build our own, right? We're not gonna use the Obsidian Reader, we're gonna build our own that is based on Markdown. So we just, any anywhere where you have Markdown file, our uh, GPT is gonna be able to work on it, index them, and then produce the results that we want. 
So the first thing to replicate Obsidian Reader is that we need to create our own reader. So the way I want to do this is I'm going to go into my Obsidian and I want to see, you know, these are my daily journal entries and they are actually in the Markdown table. So I want to actually bring in some Markdown uh, utilities to work with them to read them in. So let's create one and call read journal MD. So this could be any Markdown file, okay? And I want to specify a file path. Let's do a pass right now. And let's think about what we need here. So I said I want to mark down. I'm also probably going to use regex, so I'm probably going to bring that in. And then I'm going to use the uh, a HTML parser to find the key important things that I want from a markdown. So in my, if my markdown contains things like links to videos, links to images, just ignore them. But if they contains paragraph or headings and stuff, then I want to bring them in. So okay, three things, right? We need the markdown, we need the beautiful soap, and we need the regex. So regex is a building module. Let's import regex. We want to bring in import markdown, and then finally, from Beautiful Soap, import Beautiful Soap. So at the beginning of this LM, we talk about uh, installing Langchain and Llama Index. If you follow through, uh, you would already have Markdown and Beautiful Soap both installed for you. Now that we have those things, let's start by opening the file path. Let's brief open file path. And what do I want to open it for? I want to open it for the read mode. So I want to read the file path. And I want to say, take that and then read the text. Okay. This is just read journal. There's nothing else that I'm doing here. This operates on each individual file path. So if my journal contains five different markdown files, then it will have to be called five different times. Each time, you know, it would replace the file path and then it would read the text in that markdown. The second thing I need here is I need to be able to specify a directory so that I can do this for loop. So I'm gonna say define and I can say this could be create journal notes. This would be a directory path. I need a node parser. I need to basically create this Llama nodes manually. So I'm going to use a slightly lower level utility that is from the Llama index itself. Dot node parser, import simple node parser. Then I'm going to create the docs and just a list initialize to just a list. So I'm trying to replicate this effect here. Remember you have the docs and an obsidian reader. So I'm trying to replicate that. I'm going to say initialize the docs and then I'm going to do a for loop. For each one of them, read the journal and then feed it into the docs. So I'm going to create my parser right away and I'm going to use a simple note parser that I bring in above. Then I'm going to say loop through each markdown file in the directory specified above. Uh, maybe I'll just say dear path. So it's more explicit, it's clearer, right? So basically go to the dear path for each one of the markdown, loop through them and then bring them in. So for file path in now I could do a OS get working directory and stuff, but that is a little bit messy. So instead, I want to use the path flip. So from path flip import path, that is a bit cleaner than to hard code it. So you could do something like you know whatever like this and desktop whatever, but not as clean. What's a lot better is to say file path and take the directory path that is passed in here. So take this and create a path object, and then from there, search for everything. So iterate over this subtree and yield all existing files that matches a certain pattern. So we want to give a pattern. What the pattern looks like is just anything with a markdown base. So I don't need it to be an obsidian file, anything. As long as you have a set of markdown files, you can query your markdown files. So let's go ahead and say for file path in path block. And then we just have to pass that into the read journal MD. So let's say MD equals to read journal MD file path. So whatever is returned here, I need to return something. I haven't really returned anything. But whatever is returned here, um, it will be passed along to this MD. Okay, so what do we want to do actually in the read journal MD? Let me hide the sidebar. So I have my text. What I want to do is I want to take that and use a use the markdown utility that we brought up from here, the markdown, this one, to load my text in and maybe make it semantic HTML. So let's maybe start from there. And the reason I want to have it as HTML is because I can then use beautiful soap HTML parser to target the things that I want. So I will take away the videos and the image, the embeddings, all those things, and I want to just take the content of the markdown file itself. So we're building everything from scratch. Markdown, the markdown, and that would be text. Then I would use my soap. This is something you've seen me done before. If you've been following this channel, if you've been following this uh, playlist, this LLM playlist, I've done this before. So it shouldn't be um, anything too different from that. And then I want to find the key elements. Let's say we want to take only the first paragraph text. So let's say there are a lot of things in your markdown file, and really what you want it to, what what you want indexed is only the first 
Okay, so we want to only, let's say we want to, um, if I want to index only the first p tag, then what you do is you say p equals to so find p. You may still have a few uh, pre-processing steps that you need to do. Maybe if you're using German, for example, you have the umlauts, you need to remove that. If you're writing that in some sort of, that there's some accented characters, you need to convert that to a different, um, from UTF-8 to maybe Latin, some, some other character sets. These are where you do all the pre-processing. You want to remove names, you want to remove phone numbers, telephone numbers from your index. You could do that here as well. In my specific use case, I'm going to use regex to replace all the characters. So let me write that out, what I'm trying to do. My intention is to replace all characters before the first pipe character with nothing. Okay, so that's my intention. Um, th this is very, very specific to how you do your note keeping and how you do your daily journaling or your bullet journaling. For me, I tend to start off with a bit of background, maybe some, okay, this is the previous pages. Let's say we're in May. I said, okay, this is what happens in April and, and I'll point it out. But I don't want it to be indexed. I want only the table to be indexed. So what I'm doing is actually very specific to my use case. You may not need this, but I want to have a result. Replacing all characters, we can do this by using sub. Sub basically substitute something for another thing, right? So what do we want to substitute? What is the pattern? What do we want to substitute it by? And what is the text? So in this case here, I may want to substitute that with the p.text. Okay, so this is what I want to substitute it by. I just want it to be nothing. So I'm just going to leave nothing. This is the pattern. So in this case, I want to substitute it with, let's say, anything starting from. So this is saying that anything starting from, starting from what? Starting from the pipe characters. And then followed by anything up to the pipe character. Again, very, very specific to my use case. You may not need this result at all. You can just discard this line, but uh, I'm trying to make it work for my journal, so right? That's my template. I'm gonna keep it there, and I just wanna print the result, and I'm gonna say something like finish processing, finish processing, and say file path. That will just be return result. Now, I could go and say docs.append now with the markdown, but docs itself, I wanna pass the entire thing into this node parser. And node parser expect that each one of this element in the node parser, each one of the element in here is a document, all right? So we do need a document. So let's bring that in. Say from llama index import document. So that each item in docs should be an element, uh, should be a document. And then you can pass the simple node parser in there. So let's do this. Let's replace that with document, wrap them in, and we pass in the MD. Now we say nodes parser, get nodes from documents and we pass in this. So get notes from documents. So it's gonna find, this is a list of other documents. This is a list of documents, which means you get to call the get notes from documents. And what do you wanna return in the end? You could return, let's see, docs is meaningful. Let's return note, uh, notes and docs at the same time, both of them. So this is gonna return this, it's gonna return this. And the way you call it, so usage pattern is you may say something like notes docs equals to create journal notes and then you pass in your directory to do a quick sanity check you could run all of this and just take your own advice by pulling this out bring it all the way to the bottom remove that this will just be your notes directory this is where you store all your markdown spot so i'm going to say note path quick sanity check i'm going to check the print notes going to print the length of notes Save it, quit this out, run it. And you see five, that's because right now as I'm recording this, we're in the month of May. And in the month of May, there are like January, February, March, April, May, I'm loading this in, I have all my journals. Each month would take one journal. So in total, I'll have five journals because we're in the month of May, okay? And you will see I have a few um, notes already. So, so some of them got getting read in here, performance review, um, Jakarta, meeting a few of my clients. So this is good. And if I look at my finished processing, it goes through each one of them, February, May, April, March, January. So this one all looks good. But if you really pay attention, you see that I'm also missing a few information. And that is if I have multiple P, so multiple P tag, then um, some of them doesn't get recognized. So this is again very specific to your how you do your note keeping. So you may again want to change this, but in order to make this a little bit more robust, I'm gonna say, take this, instead of saying fine, I'm gonna say find all. Actually, let's not touch this one. Still, let's comment that out. Take all the P's. So take all the paragraph text. Find all is gonna take all of the P text. So instead of P, it's gonna have PS, just to say plural of P. 
And what I want to do is I want to take only the p-tags. Take only maybe filter for the p-tags. Filter for p-tags that have at least two pipe characters. Because that's how I know it is the table, the markdown table. If you ever use markdown a lot, um, you will know what I mean, right? If you use markdown and you create a table, you use the pipe to create a table. Month uh, and then high activities. You know, and then maybe what time you wake up. And that's how you create the table header. So this is the same idea. So I want to say, if you find a p-text and you have at least two characters, that's a valid thing, then take that out for me. So p, p for p in ps, if the p, look at the text, count the number of times the pipe appear, if it's greater than one. You could say greater than one, that means there's at least two. You can say greater equal to two, that's also okay. Uh, it means the same thing semantically. So this will say, look through each one of them, you can say a for loop for p in ps, if the p.text.com, um, this pipe character, that's more than one, then take them. Then in this case, the I think this should change to take the first element. So these are very specific to your use case. Uh, you will need a bit of engineering chop there to make sure things are chopped up to the right shape and then pass them into your index. And that's how you improve the LLM itself. Not necessarily bringing better models, you know, upgrading, getting more, spending more money on models. It's really about the engineering, getting things into the right index shape. Okay, so let's save all of that and let's run it. You can say Python dash i journal dot py. If I were to scroll through them, it looks a lot more robust. I got a lot more uh, information here um, and this looks much better. So you could eyeball that very quickly and make sure that your journals are correct. Uh, this is actually my actual journal. So I hope that uh, I'm giving up a lot of privacy just to record this for you. Um, my, my friend Kelvin was uh, staying at my home the other day and he was telling me, he was asking me about my journal system. I showed him this and he said, oh, how come you never talk about that on a video? And I'm like, there's so much privacy here. This is about my journal. This is my actual journal. Why would I want to talk about that? <laughs> and uh, he convinced me otherwise, so this is it. Th this is my actual journal, so when you're reading this, uh, you see you see my, uh, my my daily activities here. Let's go ahead and try a few things, shall we? Let's make sure that the, uh, our journal system is actually working. Let's create our query engine now, and we're gonna say index.squeryEngine. Try to run it, but the thing is, we don't have an index yet. Yeah, so before we can do that, we do need an index. We don't have an index, so let's bring the index in. So let's say, index, uh, but we do have notes. So let's see notes. Okay, we do have notes. So do creating from going from notes to index is actually really simple. I showed you that you can try to use the uh, GPT vector store index, you could use the keyword table index. So try whichever one you want. I'm going to say index and GPT vector store index, or you can try a few others, but I tend to just use the two of them here. I, I tend to use them um, in my experiments a lot. So I'm going to stick to one of this and create an index. When that is done, Query engine equals to index as query engine. Now we have a query engine built on top of index and we can now query that stuff. So we can say query engine, or let's say response, query engine dot query, and let's ask a question. Let's say what happened, uh, give it a random date. I don't know what date, just give it a random date. 24th of February, 23rd of February. Hit enter, let's print response. Fingers crossed it's gonna work. On 24th of February, the highlight was learning deep, deep learning with PyTorch with a fluency score of 275 and progress and this of 153 and the, DB, the DPT progress was E complete. Okay, this is great. These are specific to my journal system. You will get different results, obviously, because your journal would be, you would be doing different things unless you tend to be doing the same thing uh, as I was on 24th of February, but that is a very unlikely coincidence. So now you could open up a journal and compare whether the answers are correct or not. I could try another one. I could say, what about 23rd of February? Or let's just put 23 February. Let's do that. And let's print response. On 23rd of February, the highlight was that I implemented icon row and affiliations for collective. And the person was learning deep learning with PyTorch again, 153, and has completed 12 hours of DBD fundamentals. Again, these are my private journal. Uh, it shouldn't be so public, but there, there you go. But it seems like it's working. And I just did a quick check against my actual journal, and I can see, oh, verify the answers. They look okay to me, and they look correct. Now I want to go to the next step which is that every time I try to run this query, it's going to cost a bit of money, but that's okay. But would it be nice if I want to just use the LLM, shouldn't have to rebuild my index, I shouldn't have to go and re recompute this index and it cost even more money. I'm trying to do some optimizations in here. Every time I do a query though, I don't want it to send this entire text up to any, uh, the OpenAI server and then rebuild the index and rebuild the whole embeddings. There's a lot of inefficiency, so it's going to cost you more money and it's going to take you more time to run any query at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and bring 
the storage context and we're gonna say that you first build the index and if the index exists just persist them onto storage and not even have to make a uh, a call to open AI APIs anymore to rebuild the index. So all you need to do is now you rely on OpenAI to do the query, to do the LLM text generation, but the embeddings is going to be on your local machine. So first of all, if you look at your site, um, there is a, maybe there is no place where you store index yet. If there is isn't, you can just create a new one. If there is, then just skip to that. I'm going to create a new fo folder and I'm going to create storage. So create a new folder called storage or put them in Chroma, whatever. Uh, if you've been following this journey on this LLM, you've seen me done so many of these examples. So you pick one that works for you. I could try something even much more complex. Uh, instead of asking like what happened on a specific date, I could say maybe like what happened on the, what happened? What did I do? What did I do on the last week of March? You know, just go with something like this. Read the response and there you go. So on the last week of March, I work on improving the badges logic, dynamically hiding uh, empty components, adding attack. So this is pretty good, all right? So you can see that I meet a few people, I do a few work, I uh, code up a few features for SuperType, and that's it. Um, I, I see that I've been working a lot on Collective. That's one of our product right, in SuperType. That's SuperType or Collective.SuperType.AI. So I want to maybe ask about that. I want to say, one, what date did I work on SuperType Fellowship or SuperType Collective? Okay. Uh, these are the two products that I'm primarily working on. So you see me reference them in my journal. This is creating the offflow for collective, adding points built on fellowship. So if you want to uh, join a program where we mentor you and work with me and learn with me, you could go to fellowship.supertype.ai. So you could try and say, on what days did I work on Supertype Fellowship? Print the response. And I see the answers. Uh, first of February, second, third, fourth. I skip a few days after that. I focus on some other things. Maybe this is a weekend, then I started working on the 15th of February, 17th, 18th, 25th, 27th. If I change that to collective, and I print, th this is very tidy, it just summarized that. 1st of February to 5th of February, 10th of February, 18th of February, 2nd of March, 15th of March. And you know I'm not cheating because if I show you my journal, I didn't actually summarize any of this at all. It wasn't aggregated, it was just one row per day, one row per day, one row per day. So this system has to be smart enough that it tries to do this kind of summarization. Um, uh, even though they're not in the original notes itself, and you make a comparison, it's actually pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing that you can do that. From You see, from the March onwards, I start to work a lot more on collective. That's collective.supertype.ai. And I'm starting to put a lot of my resources in there. I work a lot on that. And this is great for review. This is great for you know a bit of like introspection. You want to understand a bit more about your productivity. You want to ask questions about your productivity. How are you spending time? Where are you spending time? And how efficiently are you managing your time? Well, you, this is a, a great system. Uh, which is why I never want to talk about it because it's kind of like an unfair advantage that I have. But now that we know it works, let's go and implement a local storage, shall we? So I could say if path exists, that would be OS.path exists. So let's instead say find the local directory, find storage. If that exists, read directly from storage. Okay, so instead maybe put a comment up here. So if the storage directory exists, Instead of trying to review the index, don't do that. Instead, load index from storage. Otherwise, create new index using embeddings API. To sort of compare the prices and stuff, you can bring in the logging module. The reason I'm bringing logging and sys is so I can compare the prices, compare how much credit I'm spending. Okay, and maybe between here, I will say logging, set up my logging basic config and I want to have the stream I want to say stream it to what just the uh, standard out so system standard out that out and the level for this is all information so not just warning not just error but all information so you see there's a lot of choices here I can have warning I said every time there's a warning log it out if there's a warn log it out error what log it out but here I just say any kind of info it doesn't have to be an error just log it out okay I want to also set up my get logger and then I want to add a handler. Is it logging dot stream handler stream equals to sys dot stand out standard out. And this is quite useful because you can't really optimize something you can't measure. You want to measure. You want to say how much credit I'm using, how much token am I using, and that way you can optimize things. Say, am I actually spending less money doing this? How much more expensive is this call? You can try to uh, optimize for those things if you're printing the right things and you're really looking at the metrics. If you're not looking at the metrics and you're just randomly optimizing, that's not random optimization at all. All right. So now what do we want? We want to have storage method, and now we need this to 
been loaded from Sun directory. Do we have that in Llama Index? Yes, we do. So let's go and bring that up from here. Storage context, and I want to have load graph from storage, index from storage, or indices. I'm going to say index. And since I'm not using keyword table, I'm going to also hide that out. And here we can finally call it storage context, take all the, use all the defaults, and I want to persist that to where. Now remember we just created a folder called dot storage. I want to say the local directory storage. If you want this to be hidden directory for whatever reason, just add a dot to it. So just add a dot, and then here you'll be dot slash dot storage. If it exists, the index should not be constructed. Instead, it should just be loaded. So load index from storage and storage context. This is great because that saves you a lot of money. You don't have to recreate the index. You just say load the index that you created, and that is in the storage folder directory. Okay, so that's going to save us money. This is great. But if it doesn't exist, then you need to bring in your node stores. Bring this in. It depends on whether you want to keep them or not. If you see a reason you want to keep them, you can just keep them. If not, just remove them. And of course, if you want to even um, maybe save even more money, you want to use some sort of open source LLM or whatever, right? You've seen a lot of my videos in the past, uh, like seven, eight videos in this LLM series. I use some open source LLM models. This is where you can do it. You can so go ahead and create an LLM predictor and you have the LLM predictor. Of course, you need to import that. Uh, so I'm going to do that up, up there. Then this is where you have your LLM. If you want to use OpenAI, you set OpenAI. Then you set your temperature, you set your model name, so temperature equals to zero, for example. Then you have your model name, model name it could be your DaVinci, uh, what have you, right? And then you set your uh, service context, and then you basically build it from there. So you have the service context, and that's yada yada. Then finally, you have your index, and you create it using your service context and your LM product, uh, pr product out there. So this is how you implement it using some sort of open source LLM, maybe on Hugging Face. There are so many videos on my channel that covers that, so I'm not even gonna go into that. I'm gonna just uh, refer to that playlist, go into that playlist, go and uh, watch those videos speaking about this uh, particular workflow, right? Here I'm gonna keep it a lot simpler. I will just say index equals to GPT vector store index, pass in my notes. If the storage exists, use the load index from storage and bring it in and that will be indexed. If not, go ahead and create an index. But I don't just want to create an index, I also want to persist it somewhere. So I'm going to say index dot storage context and I want it to persist, persist to exactly the same path. So persist here to storage. The first time this file runs, it's going to create that because it doesn't find it. Then it's going to persist that in storage. But the second time onwards, it's going to find it and it will just load it in. So you will save some money, save some tokens. That's great. I could use OpenAI embeddings to do that because it's only going to be a one-time process for the most part. You can try to maybe implement some sort of steel caching mechanism. Say that every five days, go ahead and rerun this. So you can set like, look at the current date. When is the last time I, step, uh, I created the, uh, the cache? And if it's more than five days ago, then just make it still and recompute the index or something. Or you could you know, create new indexes, but only on new data, but not on the old data. There's so many things you can do with this, right? I'm going to leave it here, but it's quite clear that there are still areas you can further optimize, all right? So I'm going to keep it here. I could add pass it here, so I could maybe try to print the index. And again, just to make sure that everything is working, I would like to just print an index block. Then I could then do my query engine have my index as query engine, then I will have my response one, query engine, query, then instead of asking it here, so, so this is on what dates did I work on super.collective, so on what dates did I work on super.collective. You want to print the response out, but if I want a better user experience, I don't even want to have to touch this file at all. I just want to be able to do it right in my CLI. I, I don't even want to open this file and then change the query. That's too much work. So what I want to do is I want to create an argument parser and so I can just build a CLI tool on top of that. So let me go all the way up the top. Then I'll say import out props. That allows me to create a CLI tool. I'm going to say if name equals to main. If I run this file directly, then trade it as an argument parser. So this is what I want uh, it to do. I want to say this is the usage pattern, and it would just be Python, journal.py, and I want to say pass in my query, and maybe I could ask questions like, what are places I ate at in March and April? And we're ready to create our argument parser. So let's say parser equals to argument, uh, argument parser, give the program a name, 
this is just a um, what do you want to call it? Quite query journal maybe, and give it a description. This is to query my bullet journals down using llama index and the queue flag. Let's add an argument for that. We say you could use the queue flag. You can have a long one. This is a short form. This will also work. You say either of this will work. Um, this will be a string. This will be a string because I'm going to ask the question like this. I'm going to say, what are places I ate? So this is not going to be a numeric or this is not going to be a, a, a boolean of true or false. This is a question, a string question. So I'm going to say string. Uh, I think you don't need that. You can just say string like this without a quotation mark. You could give a help. This is just great user experience. You could say, you know, I can ask a question that is answerable uh, from my journals or in my journals, right? You will need this to be required set to true. So every time you call this query, you want this argument, you need this additional argument. This is non-optional, it has to be quiet. And if somebody doesn't pass that in, just give it help and say, this is a question that is answerable from my journals. Then finally, collect them. So arguments, parser, pass. Then you can take the query. This is basically all my args. I only have one query, which is this one. So I just say, take that. You could either do it like this, you could also say query, right? Um, it's up to you. You want to say if query exists, then create a query engine, which is up here, I believe. Nope, no query engine yet, so, so we don't need this anymore. You could say this is an example. So you could print the query, just to remind us of what we ask. We say query, right? So query. Then you will want to print your results. If there is no query, just say, hey, you didn't give us a query. So no query provided, try specifying query, okay? Using the dot dash Q. Then uh, just exit and with a zero status code, that's it. This is a usage pattern, correct? Python journal.py dash, dash Q and then what are places I ate at or what dates they work on. So let's try uh, the first one. Let's say Python journal.py dash Q, that's the query. And this, you can either say Q or you can say dash dash query because we provide the shorthand dash Q. So let's use the shorthand on what dates. Did I work on super dark collective? Okay, finish processing. Okay, there's something missing. But if we look at storage, it is created doc store index store vector store. That's perfect. We only need to pass in the query. Run it again. It says loading all indices. See, remember what I said about being efficient? Instead of actually having to make another call, it's not doing that anymore. Instead, it's going to look into your storage, and so it's, the result is actually really fast. And it provides you the results. It says the dates on which work was done on Superlight Collective was 2nd of March, 4th of March, 5th of March, and 31st of March. What about this? What are places I ate in March and April? So, what are places I ate at in March and April? Let's run that. Again, you see, it's very efficient because it only uses the embedding token, 11 of them, and it gives you a summary. In March, I ate at Gilani. I live around Semtul. This is a place in Indonesia. It's slightly about one and a half hours away from Jakarta. Uh, it's a beautiful place. So these are places that are in around uh, my area. So I ate at Giuliani, I ate at Sushite and Dakiba. And in April, I ate at Panchak Garden, Aeon, and Giuliani. So if you've actually been to Indonesia and you want to visit me, uh, I'm in Semtul, and these are the places I'll pro most likely bring you. And that is really nice. I could now just open anywhere I want to. I could just open a new a terminal. I can ask my question and then query my Markdown, my Markdown based diary system. And I get the results right away. I don't have to go and sift through them. I don't have to go and read through all of my journals. I've been doing this journaling practice for quite a bit. So I do have quite a, an amount of uh, notes floating around. And prior to having this LLM uh, system, so this large language model system, I've always had to use other kind of hacks. I have to do some sort of analytics, some sort of visualization. If you've been following me for quite a while, you know I'm a, a pretty big productivity fan, right? Uh, I have a lot of videos on productivity as well. But this really changes the game for me because this creates a general system where I could query natural language and get the answers back um, doing this. And this is fantastic. You know, I could ask it like, what this day I work on something like collective, you could give me this. I think you could also add a bit of like prompting um, you could maybe do a bit of prompt engineering to tell it that I want the dates to be returned in a table format or in a markdown format. You could do a bit of this creative uh, engineering, prompt engineering to make the results even a bit nicer. No, but I'm not going to go into all of that because I think the video itself uh, should be quite focused. This is what we did and I'm really, really proud of what we have now. 
and it's really useful. I use it almost every day now to just do some query. Every time I had a question, in the past I had to consult all the different Markdown files. Now I don't do that anymore. And so really all the Markdown files, as long as they're in my directory here in the journals, then I will be able to find them. So if you want to go ahead and create a folder and start writing your notes in Markdown, you know, treat it like a journal, treat it like a diary, right? And just put them in Markdown and then just follow the same system. Uh, each month there will be one Markdown put everything in a folder and now you can clock your journal and maybe you can do some introspection, you can do some self-reflection uh, and I think that's great. That's all I have time for today. There are other videos on my channel that you may find interesting. I do a lot of work with LLM. I have created a few systems of productivity systems of, uh, in the past using Task Warrior, using Obsidian, all of these tools and now I'm combining with them with LLM. So if you want to check out my video, um, go to the channel and I hope you get to learn something new as well. Alright, so you have a great day. See you in the next video.